Welcome back to Home Studio to our 11th video in our series with Flask MySQL in Python Anywhere. And I'll try to make this one quick since my last video was like 20 minutes. So we'll try to make this less than 10 minutes if we can. And all we're going to do is a little bit of CSS. And we just have a couple little things we have to do with it to make it work with Flask. So what we want to do here with our finished table that we're now displaying, here's a little screenshot. Just do something like this. Alternating colors, put some space in between the columns, spread it out vertically a little bit, and maybe just some margin around the table or around the body itself. That's all we're going to do. So just something like this. So some simple CSS we're going to have to build in, but we just have to put in another function to be able to do that. And we also have to put our CSS file in a static folder. So we're going to do that next. So what I'll do from here, I don't think I have to do anything from here. I'm going to go over here and open up files because we're going to work with two files, the index file and the styles file. So let's open up our files in a new tab. And we'll first create a static folder. Just like we had a templates folder inside of Flask, we're now going to make a static folder. And it's just going to be called static. So we'll go here and just call it static and make a new directory. And there it is. And inside here, we're going to make a file called styles or style, whatever you want to call it, .css. I'll call it styles.css and with an S and then just make a new file. Now, before I do anything with this, and I'll, I'll save it if it's not saved. Before I do anything with this, I'm gonna make sure that I can link to it properly, because right now we cannot. We cannot just link to styles.css because we have that weird template kind of setup. So what we're gonna have to do is open up our index page. So I'm gonna go here, and I, I could get out of this, or I can open up Flask in a new tab, and just go to Flask, and go to Templates, and open up my index. I didn't open up it in a new tab. But what we're gonna do here, right after the second meta tag, or the third meta tag, is just do our typical styles. Now, if Replit did it for you, you can work on that one, but I didn't have that put in there. So I'm just gonna do link rel equals, and in quotes, I'll just put style sheet, and then I'll put ref equals. And just for now, I'm gonna put styles.css. And that's how it would typically be. We'll put the bracket and our closing brace here. Now, we can't do it like this. We just can't link to styles.css. Because for one thing, we're going to be inside of a static folder. So we're going to do something like this. We're going to put a, I'm going to get rid of this first. And we're going to put a function in here with two arguments. And it's called URL4. It's called URL underscore 4. And we don't have, we don't have to import it. And I'll put parentheses here. And we'll put two arguments. One is the folder and it's just called static and we have to use single quotes since we're using double quotes around everything and then just a comma and then we have to use something called file name equals and then single quotes again and we'll just call it styles.css. Make sure it's the correct file and make sure you put your single quotes in there. So we have single quote around static and then we have single quotes around here. We don't use a slash or anything because we're not giving a, a whole address. We're just kind of saying inside this folder, we're using that. And that's where you would put JavaScript files. Anything else that you would need, images, etc., would be inside this static folder. So that's okay. And we do not need to import in our Python file URL4. I thought you did, but you don't. And if we do, then we could just put a comma after render template. But I don't think we do because I didn't do that in the past when I tried this. So that looks okay so far. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to go back to Flask. I'll just stay in this tab and I'll go to my static folder and we'll start making some CSS. And I'll just start something simple. I'll put body and we'll just put a margin first. Margin 2M to start. And then maybe I'll put one for the table too because we do have that extra line. So I'll put table and while we're here let's put in something for the TH. That's our top row. And those are the cells in the top row, not TDs, but TH. So we'll start with the top one and we'll do TH and we'll just put padding right. And we'll do like 2M, see how that looks to start. So let's see how this looks. Now we do have to save this. And let me go to my main.py. I'll save this. And just to be okay, here's my web app. I'm going to reload this. But I think after this, we don't have to reload it. We should just be able to refresh our page. But let's see if this works. I'll reload this. And then I'll refresh this. And I'm not seeing anything different. Make sure that's saved. And I forgot something here very important. And that's actually two curly braces. 
on either side of this, in between the quotes. Sorry about that. Very important to indicate that it's being used by Flask. So that's basically embedded in there. So I guess that's why we don't have to import it or anything, because that's in there. It's kind of in there like a variable, but it's not really a variable. But anyway, that's part of Flask in there. So you need those two curly braces on either side. And I like to put spaces in there so you can see them better. So let's make sure that we have this saved now. And then we should be able to just go here and refresh it. And maybe not. <laughs> we have to reload it again. There we go. Okay, so this might be a little more than we need, but that looks okay. Uh, we could even probably put more space in between these and then kind of spread them out a little bit. We could put some padding even around the TDs if we want. And then we could color it and see how it looks from there. So let's go back to our CSS. We shouldn't have to do anything else now. So I'll put maybe 2.5 here, see how that looks. And then we'll do TD and I'm just gonna do padding all around and I'll do like 0.5M. So that should be like eight pixels. And one other thing we wanna do here is for all our rows, we wanna use nth child and we're gonna color alternate rows like even rows. So let's do this. Let's put a TR and put a colon nth dash child. And you could look that up in W3Schools if you're not familiar with that. And in parentheses, we're gonna put even. Now it's not using index number, so it should be using the second row and then the fourth row and so on. So it's not using index number for that, I don't believe. And then we could just give it a color. We'll just do background color and we'll just start with something. I'll just use something light green. And let's see how that looks. Putting a little padding on our TDs, putting a little more space on our THs, which affects them all, affects all the columns. And then we're doing this color here. So we should be able to save this and then we should be able to just refresh. So let's refresh this. Really? <laughs> I did this before, we didn't have to do that. As long as everything's set up here. All right, let me reload and let me refresh. Oh, and something's wrong. I must have did something wrong here. Okay, and this is what it should look like. I had some problems here and I guess after everything, <laughs> what I troubleshooted was if you make a change, like if you go here and change this to light blue, for example, and I don't know if this is just me, but it didn't happen before, so that's why it caught me off guard. So if I change this to light blue and I save my CSS file, I should not have to reload the web app. I shouldn't have to do that. I should be able to go here and refresh. Now, I found that nothing was happening and I didn't know what was going on. If I hold shift and do a force refresh, then it works. I don't know why. I don't know if that's just me. I don't know if that's my browser, but that's the issue there. And the last thing we'll do here just to fix this is do a border collapse and just put collapse so that we don't have any border on. I don't really want a border on it. So I'm going to go here and under table, I'll do border collapse and do collapse. And that's all I should have to do. Save it. Come here, refresh. Nothing happens if I hold shift and do a force refresh, it fixes it. So that's an issue that I'm, I'm having here. I'm not sure why. And again, I could put a border on and do other things, but that's all I really want to do here. So just to be on the lookout, if you have to do a force refresh, I was having a little issue with that and I couldn't understand what was doing it. I was changing all my code. I was going into my index and putting type equals text slash CSS and moving these things around. But actually the way I had it was fine. Other than the first time I forgot my two curly braces on either side. And here, I don't think I forgot anything. I didn't, doesn't matter what order they're in. I had everything typed correctly. I'm just having to do a force refresh, which is odd because I haven't had to do that before. And this does not need quotes here as long as it's a standard color. And that's about it. So that's all I wanted to show in this video. And in our next video, which may be in a couple days, I'll have one where we actually insert new records into the database. So we'll make a little form there. But right now we have everything looking okay. 
I'm having to force refresh to get it to work, but everything's working okay. So if you have that issue, just force refresh, or if you're on Windows, however you do it there, I'm holding shift and holding down for a second almost, like not really quickly. I have to hold down a second and do that. It's just bizarre, but you don't have to reload this thing. I was reloading it. I logged out, logged in. I tried all these different things. So anyway, that's our CSS. So all that you have to make sure to do is put your CSS file inside a static folder and then in your index make sure you use this quote here make sure for your href everything that's in quotes here you use double curly braces and then use url4 with two arguments static in single quotes and then file name equals styles.css in single quotes or whatever your file name is for your css so that's it thanks for watching home studio